says starting. And now, coming at you live from the top floor of the W Hotel, Austin, Texas, in the WOW Suite. The Marcy Lock Show! Yeah, the Marcy Lock Show! Special guest, the action philosopher, Jesse Heller. Welcome. You just locked it down. That was awesome. If I could clap, if I didn't have an elephantitis hand. <laughs> just put this right here. Yeah. You Welcome, that. everybody. And I don't know that another group is going to get that intro. Jeremy, well played. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> that, is, that is the best way to start a show. And you guys, obviously, if you're tuning into this show, you know that you're in for the ultimate best because Jeremy T. Finley is not only here in the house, um, which he's an amazing, amazing uh, professional singer, songwriter, plays the piano, plays the guitar. Jesse here also plays an amazing piano, which I didn't even know until I got to experience this weekend. So um, obviously this show's a little different. We're, you know, most of the time I get to interview my guests from wherever they're at, but I was honored and, you know, had the, the great blessing and pleasure to actually be in Austin, Texas this weekend for this man himself who is, as Jeremy put it, the action philosopher, Jesse Elder. And so, of course, I wanted to take the opportunity to get to do my show with him live this week because not only is this man a huge, huge, huge part of my life, I'm here this weekend, came, this is like I've been traveling for three to four weeks straight, literally, in event to event to event to my own adventure breakthrough to for me to go speak, for me to go teach workout stuff. This is the first event in like a long time and even just out of this whole time that I'm here specifically to learn from this genius. And this is also something that's not, um, no one can just walk into. It's a very privileged thing. So Jesse Elder is one of my personal coaches, which you only work with a few. And so it's a huge, 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 huge honor for me to just have him here and share the nuggets and golden truths that he has with you guys. But on top of that, the experience that I came for this weekend, the Gamma experience, is something also that's highly interviewed process that only very few get into. So again, super, super honored to be here with you. Thank you for taking the time. It's been awesome. It's, it's been, and, and I have like the evidence, look at my hands, I have the evidence to prove it. Are you going to tell people why my hands look like Maybe that? Maybe so. Am yeah. <laughs> I just a secret? Which is good too. That's yeah, that's true. So we're in this gorgeous, obviously suite where we had this event all weekend with just a select few amount of people getting to learn so much from Desi. Um, We've got these massive, huge windows I'd show you, but it's too bright for you to see of the, 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 the river and just beautiful Austin, Texas. So today, really to start off and take it, take, have the opportunity to be sitting next to this man, I want to give as much opportunity as I can for people to hear from you and what you do. Because So my hand's a little swollen from an experience that we had this weekend, and I still was like, I was choosing wisely everything that I got to write, because just holding my pen was like a little bit of like, awesome, my, I can feel this. And Everything that comes out of his mouth, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to write that down. Oh my gosh, I want to write that down. He's full of like the most genius information, and in working with Jesse, um, literally took me to a six-figure income a month ASAP. Like in such a short amount of time, just with the little tweaks that he allowed me to see that were huge perception shifts for me. So Jesse, I would love you to share with everyone watching and the viewers and all those that are going to be downloading this and seeing this forever. Let them know who you are and like really you know, why you do what you do. Why are you the action philosopher? Well, thank you for the intro. You're so welcome. And for sharing the space. I this know. is, uh, for those of you, you're uh, here with us at a really unique time because we have just rolled off of a two and a half day training experience that we do here in Austin. And it, it really, this experience is the, the culmination of a long journey. And you have a journey too. You started somewhere and now you are where you are. And so if you want to continue to move forward, the biggest thing I can tell you right now, in case you're looking for like the quick nugget of information and what can you do right now to take things to the next level, it's first of all, get present to what's actually happening right now. And that's mm -hmm. your first power. Yeah. And I was very fortunate to have a series of experiences early on that helped me to understand the power of presence and helped me to understand that there is only one time, there is only one moment, and it's the moment of now. And even when you're thinking about the future, you're doing that thinking now. And when you're remembering the past, whether it was painful or pleasurable, you're thinking about the past now. now. 
<laughs> so you can't get away from this moment of yeah. now. And so I've been very fortunate to have had a lot of experiences that really helped me to understand how powerful that moment was and how all of our power is in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And so many so many people, and, there, and there's uh, it's a lot of teaching now that's saying how important the present moment is, but I see so many people getting present in almost a like a, a resigned fashion. They're like, well, I guess this is my perfect zone, uh, even though I hate this house I live in, even though I hate my relationship, even though I hate my body, even though I hate my health, even though my income is terrible, well, I guess this is a present and I just have to get comfortable with it. And I say screw that. It's not about yeah. resigning yourself to the pain of the present and just hoping that it gets better. Yeah. That's not what meditation is about. That's not what a deeper spiritual connection is about. That's not what your that's not what the journey is about. And so what I have the opportunity to do is to help people to make peace with their present so that they can understand how they're creating what they're creating. And when you get clear on the fact that everything's happening in your life, that you can, you can do something about it, that you're not helpless, you're not a victim. Listen, shit may have happened to you. Things may have happened in your life that you didn't wish happened. Walk on planet Earth. Yeah. Right? That happens to, to all of us at some point. But whether or not it continues to be that way is dependent on how much control you take back over your thoughts, your language, your emotions. And I know sometimes it feels like emotions can't always be controlled, but mm -hmm. emotions are a, very, a pretty predictable thing. You can create them. And of course, your action, your behavior, those are all things that are under your control. So essentially what happens is people, when they begin to get present and they begin to really start to notice what's going on and they begin to pay attention to how they're thinking and how they're speaking and how they're feeling and how they're behaving, Before. those are four creative yep. forces, then you can start to look at everything and go, oh, that's not really what I'm made of. Like yeah. that's not really, that's not the me of me. But so many of us don't do that because we got bills to pay and you got kids to take care of and you got a spouse to look after or you've got a vacation to plan or a vacation to dream of or you've got a job. You got all these things that creep in and people end up in this life of reaction instead of a true life of action. And so the message really is simple. The message is that you have an ability inside of you. You have a nobility inside of you. You have this gift, you have a presence, and your responsibility is to allow that presence to come through you as cleanly as possible. And we look at people who are moving the world, we look at people who are shaping the world, look at the work that you're doing, and that's your presence, mm -hmm. expressing itself cleanly in the world. Mm -hmm. You have that same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's no real difference in people's potential but there is a radical difference between what people will do. There's a radical difference between what people allow themselves to do. And I imagine that the reason you turn into Marcy's show and the reason you follow her is because in some sense you admire her and you admire the results that she's created for herself. But the entire reason you're doing this is to be an example for other people and say, hey, I've done this and yeah, it's badass and it's awesome, but it ain't that big a deal. Like right. you can do it too. You have to live it to do it, you know. Yeah. Everybody starts somewhere. So where did you? What was this? A lot of people to see. Where did you come from? Who was Jesse Elder that became this Jesse Elder now? Because it's easy looking from. I know being in the position I was probably years ago. To like look at someone who's living in the space and the results that I wanted, and going, "Whoa, wow, yeah." And it's easy to validate that to say, "Well, they're amazing." Well, you know, they've got this and they've got this, and they're they're amazing. When you hear the story of where you came from and the struggles you came from that it kind of puts it into more reality perspective to go, oh, well, we've all had our story. We've all had our experience. So I could accomplish that too. I'm just in my own bullshit story right now. But who, you know, who do I want to become and how do I want to be? So give some insight as to how you became you because you're so, I mean, your you're philosophical genius like makes it real, you know, there's definitely a path to that. But how did you go from where you were to where you are now? Well, I, I appreciate that mm -hmm. setup. Um, as far as being a, a philosophical genius or, or um, being this, this teacher, mm -hmm. I'm basically just a guy who have, I've always just been insanely curious about mm -hmm. why things are the way they are. And I was really fortunate when I 
when I uh, growing up, I'm the oldest of five, mm -hmm. and we were homeschooled, and mm -hmm. so that gave me a lot of a lot of time, yeah. <laughs> a lot of time by myself, and a lot of time feeling just what I was feeling, yeah. and a lot of time to kind of get get centered and and I read a lot and. I began to observe certain things with people, and I began to observe that there seem to be two kinds of people in the world. That there are people who just kind of go along with whatever happens, and then there are people that actually seemed like, instead of things happening to them, it seemed like they were happening to life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really feel that way growing up. I was really shy, really awkward, and, and um, not terribly uh, smart. I, I remember feeling frustrated with was my mind that that was your limiting belief well you that was my so experience yeah. of myself my experience of myself was that that like when it came to math I would just have this total block I couldn't mm -hmm. I, I was embarrassed about it and felt like I don't really have the the ability to solve these problems and mm -hmm. and it felt overwhelming at the same time there's other things that felt completely natural like mm -hmm. reading I read voraciously I would read for five six hours a day and then when I was nine years old, I got into martial arts and really started getting into that journey. And that didn't come easy, but it felt right. Yeah. And we all have that. We all have things that we struggle with that we think we should be better at. Mm -hmm. And we grow up in a society that says you need to be able to perform all these functions in order to function in society, in order to be a, a member of society. Yeah. And, and there were certain parts of that that I just rebelled against. And I remember... Even, even having significant disagreements and, and um, really being in conflict with my dad yeah. about you know, getting my GED as a, as a, a homeschooled, high school age um, kid. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't see the value in it. And I just, I never got my GED. And in fact, you showed us the only test you've ever taken. I did, life. I did. And it's I, the best picture ever I, attached I, to that. The only <laughs> test that I've taken was my driver's license. And, it's uh, the coolest picture ever. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's an intense picture. Yeah, it is. Let's just say that. That's great. So, so if, you, if you're going to get a takeaway so far, it's, it's number one is that your own personal experience of life, like your direct experience of life is what matters, not somebody else's version of what you should do. Mm -hmm. And listen, don't let anybody tell you what you should be feeling, what you should be thinking, what you should be doing, unless that person is extremely qualified and has already been where you want to go or is already doing what you want to be doing in the way that you want to be doing it, then you can possibly take some advice. But mm -hmm. the whole world is full of people who and I, and I mean this—I mean this with love—and I don't mean to, to call anybody out on this, but the world is full of people who have unfulfilled dreams, mm -hmm. who have unmet needs, and who have unfulfilled desires. Yeah. They, because they're so frustrated with their own success or lack thereof, it's very easy to point at other people and say, "You should do that different. You should do that different. You shouldn't do that," and they give you all this advice based on their limitations. Yeah. So listen, you want a shortcut to finding out who to pay attention to? Look at their results. Mm -hmm. Are they living the identity that you like or that you would like to be? And if so, copy that part of it. Yeah. That's a shortcut. Yeah. So I had that experience growing up and I'm very fortunate to have been able to observe and see the difference between people who life happens to them versus those people that happen to life. And then I was very... You, you, you use that phrase, though, right now. Like, I, it was huge for me to hear how you even made it so clear to say there's spectators mm -hmm. and there's participants. Mm -hmm. And then you even took it a step further to say then there's creators. Yes. And that 1% of us are creators, and the other 99% are utilizing those creations. Is that what mm -hmm. you mean when you say that's what you observed at that yes. time period? was like, oh, there's people who just kind of go through the motions of life and just watch from the sidelines, and right. then there's participants in life. Very well put. Huge. That's, that's exactly what it comes mm -hmm. down to. And I, I made a decision early in life that I didn't want to be a spectator. Yeah. That I didn't, I didn't enjoy just being on the sidelines and watching other people have fun. Mm -hmm. And I remember growing up and feeling so awkward and so shy and so self-conscious that I mean, I heard it was bad. Like I remember one time our neighbors were throwing a party, and I was probably like ten or eleven years old. Mm -hmm. And I remember everybody at this party next door 
and I had a load of laundry because that's your responsibility when you're like you know the oldest of five and there's diapers to change and stuff like that a cloth diaper so I'm like nice. carrying laundry huh. out to the backyard and I remember going out to hang the laundry hoping and praying that somebody at the party next door would say, hey, Jesse, you all want to come over and join us? And nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling so rejected. I felt so left out, like everybody was having more fun, and I couldn't be a part of it. And so I went back inside, and then I went back outside, and I brought the laundry right. in, hoping that somebody would notice me. And I kept going back and forth, and after a while, I just gave up, and I just thought, you know, I'm just going to go read a book by myself. Yeah. And... That experience at the time was so painful of feeling left out. Mm -hmm. But now looking back, it's almost laughable because it's a self-inflicted example. It's a exactly. self-inflicted scenario. And yeah. you know, now I recognize and I teach people and I help people to remember that if, if somebody's not inviting you to the party, ask or throw your own freaking party. Yeah. You all yesterday, one of the one of the exercises that we did for this training. I had no it, problem with that. I, I tend to do yeah, that everywhere I go. Shocking. <laughs> shocking. So one of the one of the things that, that that we teach in our trainings is what Marcy alluded to earlier that there are three types of people in life. That there are spectators, there are participants, and there are creators. And most people will be happy to go through life spectating. And nothing wrong with that. Like if you enjoy something and if you if it gives you joy and pleasure to watch someone like a great performance awesome that's great but once you're going over the across the board across how they, the board how they experience life yeah exactly i mean there are people who the last time they ever actually participated in something was you know back in high school or back in college or, or whatever so the assignment was to be a creator not just a participant and not a spectator so the assignment was that you go out for lunch and we had a group of seven people in this particular training. Mm -hmm. So there's seven very of you guys. Very small, very limited, very amazing people, phenomenal. Yeah, amazing, mm -hmm. an awesome, world-class group. So everybody goes out to lunch, and the, the assignment is that when you're at lunch, you have to engage two people yourself, and you have to be a leader. You have to be a creator, and you have to have a dance party. Mm -hmm. And the dance party has to be... 30 seconds and I know it sounds goofy and crazy like this outrageous example but what it what it makes you do is it makes you get off of spectator mode even gets you out of participant mode and it puts you in a position where you're the one that's creating something for other people to mm -hmm. participate in and other people to enjoy mm -hmm. so I get a video sent back to me on my phone within like a few minutes like they were literally there for for like two minutes less than a minute and we Created, walked right in and made it happen. It was seven powerful people. That's the only people that he trains. It's really intense, powerful people. And we were just like, let's do the sucker. And yeah, yeah, it was, and it was the whole place we got in it. And I was on the chair. It was like, let's do the yeah. sucker. It was yeah. awesome. And and he changed all those people's whole state, entire environment. Changed yeah. their whole focus. People coming up and be like, can we do that again? That was so fun. They went from just <laughs> sitting and eating lunch and going through the motions of their day, and they were probably on their lunch break from lunch, or, you know, work, etc. To like literally feeling like passion and thriving and like wow like I didn't know I could create that emotion and that's like that's again being a creator is like any um, you know what do I, and you teach this so heavily is that whatever you're feeling you're focused on is obviously what's going to expand so what do you want to experience even if you find yourself being uh, it's like well, well what do I want to feel right. now and how do I create that emotion right yeah it was it was phenomenal it was excellent yeah, well, mm -hmm. it, was, it was easier for some than others. <laughs> I was like, let's do this. Let's dance. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> yes. So when we, if we think about that as a, as a metaphor for life, mm -hmm. think about in your own life, what areas are you feeling, let's just say, less than abundant? Mm -hmm. And if we look at all the areas of life, about your physical health and vitality, if you look at your relationships and your heart connections, if you look at your income and how that money is flowing in and out of your life, if you look at your spiritual life and, and whatever way that you experience that and whatever way that you express that. I mean, life has just only so many areas that you can grow and you can experience. So if we take that dance party metaphor, mm -hmm. what you did that was different than everybody else that was in the restaurant sitting down eating. And let's face it, who the heck walks into a restaurant expecting that a dance party is going to break out? Mm -hmm. And we had video before and it was totally just dead. Yeah, it was like crickets. There's nothing going on. All of a sudden, then we have like this energy starts going. Mm -hmm. But if you look at that as a metaphor for your life, 
where, what areas of your life are you feeling less than fulfilled? What areas of your life, maybe even do you have some real pain going on? Well, the way out of that is to be a creator. And in order to be a creator, oftentimes you must first be a good copier. And mm. so, you know, if you're learning a craft, I mean, Jeremy did a beautiful piano intro for us. And mm -hmm. If you're going to learn how to play piano, it's very rare that you're going to sit down the first time at the piano and start playing your own songs. Mm -hmm. What you do is you start learning a song, preferably a song that you like, mm -hmm. and you learn to play, and you learn to do it, and then eventually you kind of have that cover tune. Mm -hmm. Like last night, we're just belting out Coldplay, like yeah. everybody in this room. We're like, oh, the words, oh, got it. it yeah. But you start by learning to play a song that you like that somebody else wrote, and you copy, and you get good at it. And over time, you learn to do the motions. You learn to play. And it's the same thing of anything else. The same thing is true in art. If you're going to learn to paint or learn to create in a visual medium, then you find something that you can copy, find something you can, can do. It just so you can learn the mechanics, something you can learn the craft. And over time, then you can go and do your own thing. Truthfully, the, one of the best ways to be a strong leader is to be a strong follower first mm -hmm. and follow the right examples. So if you... So I have the best coaches. If you find yourself in an area where you're not fulfilled, you're not realizing the experiences that you want to have, then what you have to do is find somebody who is getting those results and copy them. Now... That can take a lot of different forms, but there are people in the world who are producing phenomenal results in their health, in their relationships, in their income, in their creativity, in their spiritual feeling and expression. Well, find out what they're doing. Ask questions. Be like that little kid that's so curious and just wants to know. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you'll start to see clues. You'll start to see things that show up over and over and over, and you can do those things. And when you do those things in your life, like that's when magic happens. That's when you start to see the difference between today and yesterday. Mm. And there's a, a very famous quote in the, in the personal growth industry that uh, the, the past doesn't equal the future. And I disagree with that totally. I say that the past exactly equals the future. And people go, no, that's not true. Like I know that I have potential. I know that I can change. Yeah. Listen. Potential is a nice way of saying you haven't done shit yet. Yeah. So potential, yes, that's awesome. And if you have a child, you should tell that child you have potential because yeah. they're building a sense of their future. But listen, if you're over the age of like 10, you have to start dealing in reality. Show me what you've done different. So if you want to have a new future, you have to create a new past. And how do you create a new past? Well... Right now, if you do something radically different, like right now, if you were to stand up and shake your booty a little bit and then sit back down, guess what would happen? You standing up, shaking your booty a little bit, and then sitting back down, that would create like this totally new past for you. That would create this totally new memory. So by you standing up, Getting up, move. You might already be moving. I'm not sure if you are or not. I just did. I shook it. I was like, I'll participate. Well, I'm participator. I, participator I'm slash creator. creator. Mm -hmm. So if you get up and you do something different and then you sit back down, what you've done is you've created a new past for yourself. So you can use this principle. You can use this strategy of maybe we're going to invent a new process here. New past creation. <laughs> I'm a creator of new pasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So if that's what you're going to do, do something different. Then when you go to sleep tonight, you're going to sleep on a day that had some variety in it. Then when you wake up in the morning, you have a new history. Yeah. And I love it. That reminds me of the quote. It's like, um, tomorrow won't be different. And depending on, it, tomorrow's only different depending on what you do today. Right. Right? And so it's like, I get that. It's like you're saying, well, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past if you're going to move forward in the future, mm -hmm. but that takes action. And, and you're, if you stay in the same shit, you're going to have the same future. So even what you're talking about with, you know, just start, like you start learning the piano, you start this. It's like the same thing applies in the tools of life. I get all these people all the time that are like, well, how did you go from this to this? And how did you become this? And how do you do that? And it's like, they want a big aha. And I'm like, it's 
moment at a time. It's a thought at a time. It's a feeling at a time. It's it's a meal at a time. If you're focusing on the body changes, right. it's a, a work at a time. As you create the new belief system, you retrain your mind that that's what you want. You're focused on what you want, step by step by step, to get the results. And that seems like everyone just wants a big aha, you know, thing that always just you try for a second, you don't grab onto, and then you go back to the same results. Right. You know, so yeah. yeah, smoothly put. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Yeah, and that's what your genius at teaching, though. But uh, I, and I would love um, your concept was huge for me of seeing life through the eyes of our potentiality or our limitless possibilities. That abundance is all things. When you are literally living in that divine alignment, and I mean, this is genius. What you taught this weekend on how to live in divine alignment, like those. All those things piecing together, that when you're in that space, literally all there is is abundance in all things. And if you're, and I got this from Jesse. My message has started to shift even greater because he's he's been that guide for me, standing in my corner as I've launched and created the Goddess Revolution experience and uh, uh, unleashing the full Goddess and standing in that truth. And it was these little tiny things that Jesse shifted my perception in that made me just go, oh. Oh my gosh, I get it. Like if I'm not living in abundance in every aspect of my life, it's like doing this to God. It's like giving God the finger. And that was huge for me to see. It's like where did we start validating at some point that, you know, that um, one aspect can be here and the other one's up here, but that literally our potential and possibility is that everything, why would we choose other than massive abundance? So I would love your like, wisdom on that or you to share how you see that because that's I think that's such a huge perception shift for a lot of people awesome awesome that's a, I think that's a perfect next step for, yeah. for you to watch this um, full disclosure uh, these these theories are, are far from um, I, I didn't always think this way I didn't always believe this way and I remember riding the bus to go and teach martial arts classes mm -hmm. when I was a teenager uh, Okay, I was 20, and mm -hmm. I didn't have a car, and I was broke as heck, and I was riding a bus. And I remember being angry, like angry at God, like mm -hmm. how come I can love something so much? I can love martial arts, I can love teaching, which that's what I was doing at the time, mm -hmm. and yet I'll never be able to make money. Mm -hmm. Like that's just not fair. And I remember, I remember being angry, like angry at God, like how can, how can you possibly put somebody put a desire in someone's heart for them to want something so badly and yet they can't have it. Mm. That's how I felt. Like I felt like I want it so bad. Like I, I didn't want to be rich. I just wanted to pay my bills. I just wanted to have a little bit of extra money that I could travel with or, or and I was just so frustrated. And so over a period of time and ultimately just reaching the threshold and just saying enough is enough. Like. I have to take some new action. I can't yeah. keep doing the same thing. You know, the action I took was I decided to. I, I wouldn't. I didn't put it this way at the time, but I invested in myself. Like I went and actually paid money, which I didn't even have very much, but I invested that in myself. And I remember buying this course that was just very basic, like how to make money in your martial arts school kind of thing. And I was like, this isn't going to work. This is just cheesy. This is stupid. These guys just want my money. That's all it is. And I, like it. And I had this really bright, shiny mindset. And But I tried a couple of things, and I'll be darned. They actually worked. And it actually helped the people that I was there to help. Sir. Yeah. And so I, I just, you know, the story continues, and we ended up building this martial arts school, and that martial arts school went on to do almost a million dollars a year, and then we opened up more martial arts schools. It ended up with eight martial arts schools and you know, $3.2 million a year business. Yeah. But it wasn't always that way. And so I just share that with you because you know, it's, it's easy to have two people who you know, have this abundance and flow and you go, okay, great, nice for you guys. But listen, that's, neither one of us started there. We're here because we figured some shit out. Probably the hardest way possible. <laughs> And you don't have to do that. Like, remember what I said about find somebody who's getting the results and just all of that? Well, that's a huge thing. So I did that. And this philosophy now of abundance really is an all or nothing experience. Like, if you're going to have the health and the body and the vitality that you want and that you desire and that you deserve, 
Well, that's a form of abundance. Mm -hmm. That's a form of plenty. Like you have more energy than you need to go through your day. And that excess energy, it really is an excess because you start to find extra things to put it into, mm -hmm. like your family, your friendships, your community. And it's like that all of a sudden just becomes even more pleasurable, even more, more exciting. That to have abundance in your relationships. I mean, think right now. Think about somebody who you love, someone in your life who, who you have a love for. And it might be a friend or a family member. could be your significant other. But if you love that person and you have a love for that person, doesn't it make sense that you just want that love to continue to grow? And then do you want that love to continue to expand? Mm -hmm. Well, that's another form of abundance. So if you're going to have that form of abundance, well, what about in terms of income? And this is one that a lot of people get kind of hung up on because you know we're not taught that money is actually very, 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 very easy to come by. We're not taught that. And so we've got all this you know, old programming, old ideas that you don't have to go and undo them. You just have to stop feeding them. You have yeah. to stop reinforcing them and start doing something different but you can experience abundance. It's absolutely possible for you to have more money than you do month. At the end of the month, you have more money, and many people experience the opposite of that. They end up running out of month before, before they... Um, running out of money. Before they run out of money yeah. before they run out of mm -hmm. month. Thank you. And that's another form of abundance. You can experience abundance in every area of life, and it's actually far easier to experience abundance in all areas of life than it is to experience only here, only here, only here. And that's exhausting. But that's what I, I love how you put it too, is that if you're in struggle and you're you're you know you think that success is struggle, you're like you call it out as like that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. People that are telling you success is hard, success is struggle, they're it's just because they're struggling and they want to pull you down and struggle with them. Or they and, want they want company. Yeah. And that, it's that mindset that says, and I mean, I catch myself, like, it's just how we're all training conditioned, like, oh, work hard. It's like, bullshit, I'm going to, like, you know, work, I, not even work. I don't work. I just get to create living my passion and purpose and knowing that when we align, like you teach, that the people, the perfect people are flowing into me. And, and then it's like when you're aligned with that abundance and all things, like, it just, just up levels to such a huge degree. But I love how you call that out and, and give it as it is, is, that it's those stories, even to say, you know, like you starting off and saying, being in martial arts, I love this. So if I'm doing something good and I'm just helping people, like I can't make money, is that fair? And, you know, we've had, you know, some people even this weekend working with it that their story before was that, well, I'm a mom and, and I've got to take care of my kids or I've got this, so I can't share. When really is that all, how, how would you put that to people that say, gave you that story? Well, I would challenge it because... For us to have this, this story that says it's hard and I have to suffer, well, I, I, I do believe that there is a place for effort. But there's, there's really two types of effort. There's effort that has pleasure and there's effort that is filled with pain. So if you have effort that is pleasurable, I mean, if you think of in your life, have you ever had something that may have been difficult but it was actually kind of fun? Like if you ever played a game that was a little bit challenging, but it was like fun and you were engaged and focused and maybe you didn't use the word fun, but you're engaged mm -hmm. and it's like making you better and like you feel it and you feel progress. Well, there's an effort to that, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But when we take effort and we put this pain into it and we just keep pushing, hoping that eventually it's going to stop, that's what, what struggle is. And I'm here to tell you that if you are struggling, 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 and you're just telling yourself that you just have to have perseverance and you have to have determination and that someday it'll be better. Listen, this whole idea about just spinning the plates, spinning the plates, spinning the plates so that none of them fall. Listen, maybe some of them need to fall. Maybe some of those plates need to just drop and hit the ground and you forget about them because nothing is worth you getting off of your center. Nothing is worth you being out of harmony with the truth of who you 
are. Nothing is worth that. And, and please, hear me on this. The greatest gift that you can give the world is the gift of your happiness. I love that. That's your love gift. That. That's what you're here for. How the heck are you going to help anybody if you're in pain? If you're suffering, you can't help anybody. So put yourself at the top of the list. That's leadership. And if you have children that are watching you and you're struggling and suffering. What are they learning? Struggle, suffer, and it just becomes this vicious cycle. Right. No, that's just right. it's painful to. So to break out of that does require courage mm -hmm. because it requires doing things differently. But that's why you have shows like this that you can watch and reinforce that decision. And I mean, we've all made hard decisions. You've made incredibly hard decisions in your life to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. But looking back, it wasn't hard. No, it's like harder to stay there. It's like people think, yeah, it's this huge thing. And today, one of my um, newest uh, clients and you know had said I love seeing you all over the country and sharing your passion and putting your sacrifice and effort into it and I instantly <laughs> texted her back and I said I said well sacrifice and effort is the bullshit story you get to drop I said I'm living in passion I'm thriving you know good totally. thing you're, good thing you made this decision to move forward and drop totally. the story of survival totally. yeah totally mm -hmm. and then and so that this whole idea about I mean learn to learn to find the things that are hard that you enjoy and when you find those things that are difficult, but you learn to develop an addiction to that, you learn to develop an enjoyment of those things, mm -hmm. and pretty soon you start to kind of like this one mm -hmm. that will say, "Oh, that looks impossible and fun." <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that cliff, I was yeah. like, "And that scares the fuck out of me." That means yeah. I get to try this, but exactly. changing it from fear to excitement—it's totally. total just perception. Totally, mm -hmm. totally breathing. Yeah. <laughs> breathing <helps. laughs> So what is it that you want? Like what's in your life right now that isn't at the level that you want? And use this show, use this training, use her as a resource to help you get there. Because, I mean, you have those desires for a reason. Like you have that feeling of wanting. You have that for a reason. That is divinity. That is God talking that. inside of you. That urge, that nudge that you have to learn, to grow, to give, that's there for a reason. And if, as Marcy said, if failure to experience abundance in every area of your life is like giving God the finger, then having a desire and not following through on it is the same thing. The, the feeling of desire is how that's how the whole universe grows. I mean, the universe is expanding, and you are a part of that universe. So for you to continue to expand means being where you are and being present where you are, and you can make peace with that, but you're going to have things that you want that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Like, that's what life is. That's how – that is life. Life is this unfolding – and because you're the only thing on the planet that has the ability to see a future different than the present, that future and you deciding to move toward that future, that's how spiritual evolution happens. That is spiritual evolution. We're having this conversation on a MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. We're having this conversation on an idea mm -hmm. that this guy named Steve Jobs had that – became real and now allows us to have this conversation. If that's not evolution, I don't know what is. Okay. So your desires, you have a responsibility to bring them into existence. And if you won't do it for yourself, do it for people that are watching. You have far more impact than you're probably giving yourself credit for. There are people that are watching you, there are people that are watching you live your life, that the moment you start to do something different and get a different result, you become a powerful, powerful inspiration for them. And even if you only change one person's sense of possibility, it was worth it. Yeah, and it's, you don't even know how many people you change. I remember when I first, my first uh, night in my body transformation group, I did like 10 people, a small group, you know, and, and I remember at the end thinking, hey, we're starting a revolution of living in authenticity and like choosing your best life and choosing happy and and I thought in my mind half of it was like, bullshit, there's like 10 people. A revolution, my ass. And then it was within a week, it was like, oh, from these graduates, messages from their friends or family, people like that were friends of the friends of the friend who hung out with the person was like, 
this person just being around them and how different they are completely changed the whole family. I'm just like, wow, it really is true. Like, you don't even know the amounts of people that you affect when you just choose to, and it's like you liberate others. And that's part of half the reason why, Jesse, I am, I act like such a dumbass. It's just, it is who I am. Like, as I dropped all the masks and the stories and just, you know, instead of proving my old and was right, that I was going to be judged or anything like that, and I'm just like, well, I, I choose happy. Right. When I jump up on chairs and dance or, you know, I act all crazy, it, like, just comes from me because this energy comes from me because I'm aligned and I'm happy. But that almost liberates, I feel like that's what I get the most is people say, well, you obviously don't care <laughs> about what people think about you, and you're so happy. Oh, you know, it's okay to act like me too, and we're missing that, and just right. each of us authentically being who we are, and that's spreading like wildfire. And real quick, because we're about halfway in, I want to make sure people know how they can get in touch with you, what you're kind of up to, so that, that they can obviously share in the same genius I, as much as possible. I mean, I get the good stuff. I'm like one of the very few clients, but... I know you have several things at least that anyone can be able to take advantage of it's your upgraded life, etc. Sure. The, the best place right now is just go to jesseelder.com. There's a series of uh, free videos up there called the Mind Vitamin Video Series and just two, so awesome. two three minute um, just, just tastes for you to uh, just remind yourself of what you already really know. These are just reminders. I'm also very active on Facebook and so if you find my page and just send a request and I'll usually know that we have friends in common, so I'll, I'll accept it. Um, and that's this just the easiest way to do it. Uh, there also is an email list at my site, so if you want to opt in, that's cool. Uh, if not, that's totally cool, too. Cool. So, Jesse, taking it from, because I, I, I feel like I, I have all this coming up in my brain, like so many things that you teach that are just so powerful, and you have such a genius way of sharing it and the perception shifts that I'm like asking you about this question. I'm like, well, he didn't really get to finish the story. Like, I know that you came from a, a deep, dark place, how would you say, what made it, it what's the shift in relevancy for you? What are the, the key tools that you feel like you started to implement to go from this person here that can sit here and spout this amazing gifts and genius and philosophy and you are the action philosopher and you change life so quickly and easily, how, what, what were those things that really impacted you? If someone's in this place now and they're really dark, deep, dark hole, what, gives them that, that first step to step out of it. I remember one night when I was sitting on the floor of my karate school, which was this like dingy, you know, it just wasn't clean, I wasn't taking care of it. Um, I loved teaching and I loved helping people, but I was totally broke, I was miserable, I was totally lonely. And and I remember I remember feeling so angry, but that anger was matched by a feeling of fear, and the fear that I had is I didn't know why I was here, like I didn't know why I was on this planet, and and that terrified me. It terrified me to think that I'm just drifting along and that there's no, whether I'm here or not, doesn't really matter. Yeah. And, and that scared me. And I became, for whatever reason, I became obsessed with finding out if that was true or not. Mm -hmm. Like, is it true that, that, every, that I'm just floating along or... Or is there some some bigger purpose to it? And and I had an experience that that made me realize beyond the shadow of a doubt what what the answer really was. And that experience was wasn't pretty. And um, I don't know if you have kids that are listening to this, but this might be the the rated R version of the show, besides the cursing and, and the I don't thing. I don't even think we've cursed so far, right? I haven't yet. <laughs> Have I? <laughs> At that time in my life I was I was teaching, um, but I was also competing quite a bit and I was competing in these uh, like underground uh, tournaments. Mm -hmm. And Basically, these were like in these nightclubs, and 
and there's one one nightclub in particular that they would roll out these mats onto the dance floor and it'd be like you know late at night and it'd be smoky and everybody's drinking and it was loud and and the whole place just smelled like cigarettes and beer and sweat and adrenaline. I love your face even as you're describing it. It's like it was a, it was an intense yeah. uh, intense time. So I went through this this period. I went through this time period of going through like this fighting every night or every week, having this fight every week where I'd step out on the mat with no safety equipment and no um, time limit and no rules. And I was one of those guys that would get out there and fight. And I did it partly to make money because I was broke. And I also did it to, to find out. Like I wanted to find out what I was made of. And that's kind of a, that's neither a, a, a Male dominated thing or female. We all want to know who we are. Mm -hmm. I just use, you know, at that time in my life, I used fighting as a way to, to explore that. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing is creating this feeling where I would go out into this ring and I would have this match. And what would start to happen is this uh, violent situation would unfold and I would go through this violent situation and I would win. And, and that taught me a lot about myself, taught me a lot about perseverance and about focus and certainly about training and conditioning. But more than anything, uh, it started to give me back my confidence. But this one night, I ended up matched up against someone who was uh, about 40 pounds heavier. So that's, that's three or four weight classes up. And his corner, you know, his coach had been watching me compete all season long. And they knew that I was going to use a certain tactic where I would try and you know, duck under his punches and grab him and take him down. And so we're circling for the first round. We're getting ready. I know he's going to just launch that punch and try and knock me out. And so I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for that punch. And as soon as that punch comes in, I'm going to follow my game plan, take him down, and then um, apply a submission and win. So I was waiting for the moment. The moment came. Here comes that punch. And as it happened, I shot in and I secured the clinch. Like I had him by the, I had him, my arms around his body, but something was wrong. Like I, I couldn't take him down. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much I was trying to take him down, he's he's like wriggling free. And I realized the reason he was getting free is his corner, his coach had covered his body in Vaseline because they wanted to make him harder for me to hold on to. Technically, it wasn't against the rules because uh. there weren't. Yeah. Any rules, um, but then that, that quickly turned that whole experience into a nightmare yeah. because I spent the next fifteen minutes of the fight avoiding his punches unsuccessfully, and I kept absorbing punch after punch, and I took a lot of punches to my body, to my head, and I ended up essentially um, I lost the match, and I told my corner man immediately afterwards, I said, I, I think you need to take me to the hospital. So he took me to the hospital, and they did these x-rays, and the doctor came in and closed the door behind him, and he said, Mr. Elder, uh, the reason why you're having such a hard time breathing is because your left lung is collapsed, and your nose has moved over uh, too far. Well, any direction your nose has moved over is not good. <laughs> and, yeah, that's probably true. And you have a, uh, he said you have a concussion, and so... Then he, he walked out, and I'm there by myself in the hospital, and I remember feeling so bad. Like, I'd let my family down. They came out to watch me fight. I let my students down. I let my friends down. I let everybody down, and and I lost the fight, and I was hoping to get paid. And instead of getting paid for the fight, now I'm going to end up having thousands of dollars in medical bills. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, like, it was the lowest moment of my life, and I, and I asked myself the question, how am I doing? And immediately, the answer that I got back, like, changed my life. The answer I got back is, I'm fine. And I thought, well, this is weird. Like, I'm sitting here in the hospital, and I just got physically beaten and almost destroyed, and I'm in more physical pain than I've ever experienced in my life, and yet the answer that I'm get, getting back is, I'm fine. Well, this is the, the, the moment that happened. Who's the, I start asking myself, who's the I that got beat? And who's the eye that's, that's fine? fine. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was like, wait a minute. Like, I have a body, but I'm not my body. 
Like, I got it. Like, in that moment, it was so clear. Like, I have a body, but I'm not my body. And, and all of a sudden, like, these answers just started coming. And that night when I was at my karate school and just crying and angry and scared that I didn't have a purpose, all of a sudden it was like, here it is. Like, I have this body that's inhabited by this energy that I call me, but that's not, this body isn't really me, it's the physical expression of me, but I am energy, and you can call that energy soul or spirit or whatever we want to call it, but like that night in the hospital, I really understood, like I really got it, that I am this energy, and that energy always has been, and that energy always will be, because energy can never be destroyed, energy can never disappear, it can change form, but just like the, you know, the we've got you know lights in the on the lamp back there. Those lights are illuminated because energy is flowing through them. When you turn the light off, the bulb goes dark. But the ener nothing happens to the energy. It just withdraws from the bulb, but it's still there. It just doesn't look the same or express itself the same. And that night in the hospital bed, that's like the message that I got, and all of my fear went away. And I stop worrying about shit. I stop worrying about what do people think about me. I stop worrying about what if I fail. I'm like, I can fail. Yeah. Like I'm timeless. Yeah. And I'm having this human experience, but it's not. I don't need to worry about it. And I almost took that beating, for because especially where, you know, I re I resonate with this because I'm physical and because I'm a fire energy and like obviously I studied the body and the body was that big thing from the time I was little that I was thinking was the validation. And so you were so super physical, and that was your expression. And so that almost had to be taken away from you. For you to see the deeper element that that wasn't actually what you consumed of as all, and it, it was huge for me to hear you this week and describe energy, and that it work, I mean, like creation is always happening, and you can never shut down creation. So it's simply always a choice of what you're creating, either positive or negative, and there's only two, positive or negative. Right. But that's literally what you're saying with that moment for you, that you recognize the beginnings of this stuff that you teach, which is so phenomenal now. And it, and it made that night a blessing. Mm. And I would not have wished that night on my worst enemy, mm. but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. So now I get questions sometimes, people saying, well, what about, you know, Jesse, I haven't been through a full contact fight. I don't want to have that experience. Listen, mm. look at any pain, any drama, any trauma. It taught you a lesson. Mm. And I'll just advise you to look for the lesson, forget the experience. So. Mm. Awesome. So what would you say then, now people are going, okay, so you were in your shit too. You know, you definitely had your painful, deep, dark moments, and you were broke, and you were all these things, and now you're here. What do you think are the biggest key shifts for you that kept you on that path? Because a lot of people will hit that struggle and then go back. So if they go, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm really, I'm always creating, like, I know, like, do you have certain concepts that you feel like are the most valued to you? The, the biggest concept is authenticity. Mm -hmm. And authenticity is simply is you being the you that you feel you 15. should be. 15. Okay, yeah. So if, if you think about yourself being authentic, that's the greatest honor that you have to pursue. And mm -hmm. if something doesn't feel right for you, it probably isn't right. And you're going to find things that challenge you and make you grow that feel uncomfortable. But just because something's uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not right for you. It just means it's new. So that's the single core philosophy is authenticity. Yeah, and that's huge because until you're authentic and you're actually, and you say this all the time, you always say, until you can be truthful mm -hmm. with what you're experiencing, mm -hmm. then it, it won't change. It's all a lie until you can be truthful. And just even you, um, with Jesse coming into my life, was like having me track my numbers every day and even the growth of my business and what I was doing, it was it was like such a different thing to see what is really happening every day and how am I aware of that and what's really going on versus just like kind of disconnecting from it. Right. It, was, right. it was like, whoa, this is phenomenal to get like it's Pearson's Law and yeah. I don't know if you want to share that, but it's like whatever you track and measure or whatever you track you can measure, but whatever you track and measure can expand it exponentially. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. It was huge to go, whoa, now I know right. how, and now my mind's like looking for ways that I can improve right. and create and do all these different things. So, exactly. um, so and I know we've only got like 10 minutes um, where you have 10 minutes left of his genius. We're actually on a time crunch to, to get out of obviously this amazing, beautiful studio that we've been in. And, you know, I was so honored to, to ask Jesse to just, you know, hey, can we crown us in time-wise and be able to share some of your golden nuggets and and so that all of you guys could listen in, but 
I'd say, like, what are the things that you most likely feel like would be the most valued for people to hear coming from you? Yeah, so if, if we make it practical now for you, the, the best thing that you can do to apply some of these ideas and these big concepts, number one, you have appointments with everybody else in your life. You have appointments with friends, family, mm -hmm. clients, coworkers, employees, employer. You've got all sorts of other people that you make important enough to put them on your schedule. Put yourself on the schedule first. Mm -hmm. Have a date with yourself. Powerful. Make yourself the most important person that you make time for. Because it's only if you do that that you're even going to have any energy to give anybody else. If you don't do that, then it's actually disrespectful to all the other people in your life because they're not getting you. Mm. They're getting tired you. They're getting mm. frustrated you. They're getting angry you. If you've got the kids, bitch mom. the bitch yeah, mom, they're absolutely. giving you the, you're giving them the shadow version of yourself. And I don't mean like yeah. dark, evil part. I just mean like the, the, it looks like it, but it's not the real thing. Yeah. Take time for yourself. And look, if that means taking a day, then take a freaking day. You are worth it. And if it means taking a weekend, take a weekend. Mm -hmm. Nothing is worth being fake. Nothing. And if that means rounding up a bunch of girlfriends and get everybody together and just have time with yourselves, that's awesome. Provided that it's an uplifting experience, not a bitch session. Yeah. Take time for yourself. Your body will thank you. Your soul will go, yes! Finally! And that energy and that power will come back to you magnified and you'll put it into every area of your life. Yeah, and that's, that's as hard as it needs to get right there. Well, and, and so you said, what's the one thing, I'll let you answer this, but this is basically your question. We're all like guessing a million different things. I love this. Mm -hmm. You said, what's the one thing every person wants? So I'd ask you, what's the one thing every person wants? 24-7, 365 days a year. And we're like, choice, uh, Freedom, uh, peace, uh, balance, happy, <laughs> and aha, uh -huh, I'll let you share. So the one thing that every human being wants in any given moment, the one thing that everyone wants to feel is better. <laughs> That's all we're all looking for. Here I am. I want to be there. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, this is great. I want to be there. Ah, this is great. I'm hungry. You eat. Ah, I feel better. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting hungry again. This is life. Mm -hmm. You're never going to arrive at it. You are it. Mm -hmm. So just learn to make yourself feel better. So and part of that message is it's being present in the moment of what you're in and knowing that it is perfect growth and expansion. And, and when you said this, I was like, this is how what I see so many times. People go, okay, okay, I realize I want something different. You know, I realize there's resistance. I'm sabotaging all these things. I want something different. And then we put all these ideas and these thoughts and these perceptions on it that make it so hard and big, it stops us from leaving our comfort zone. So it's like someone's going to enroll in my program. They're like, oh, but what if I fail? What if I don't get the body? What if I this? And, and like all these fears and these words. It's like, you know, all I really do is teach you a process where every day you're just growing happier and healthier, happier and healthier, happier and healthier. And that's what you're saying. Just every step, every moment is just, I'm happier and I'm healthier. I'm happier and I'm healthier. I'm feel better. I feel better. I feel better. I feel better. As it's constant expansion, if you choose expansion, instead of just like, oh, it looks like this. I'm going to be a spectator. You actually want to participate and experience life and then create the life that you want. Not just, oh, he's, he's creating a dance party, I guess I'll stand over here and participate, but if you're in shit and you want your own dance party, fucking create it. There you go. I did. I, I dropped it for us because you, have, you, go. you got to. But literally choosing that it just gets to be, if we, we feel good, if we're not feeling good, this is what I love that you say that, that allows it to simplify. If I'm not feeling good, I'm not in alignment. And if you're not feeling good, you don't have any power anyway. Yeah. You're, you're, like you just said, I'm off whack. If I feel myself starting to become bitch mom, that's when I'm like, whoa. And I go internal. I'm like, what's going on? And if my kids are triggering me, I'm like, whoa, something's going on inside me. Right, right. It's allowing them to trigger me. So I get to go, like, what's what's going on inside here? How do I create what I want? So I am an awesome, amazing mom, not turning into a bitch mom and creating disconnect and creating limiting beliefs for them that, like, oh, you know, I have to show up this way and then mom will love me. Bullshit. It's my own shit going on, not my kids. Yeah. You know? So I love that. That's like, 
this man is such a genius at, at literally creating these shifts of perceptions. Like you said, just little tweaks that have assisted me in like propelling my life to further and further and greater degree. So I know we're, we're pretty much out of time, Jesse. So I'd love just, again, like for you guys, obviously you, you know uh, um, you can download the Marcy Lock app to be able to get all the past shows and you can watch this show over and over and again. I know actually when I um, saw the interview with you and Garrett, um, I watched it so many times over. And so when I was first just so drawn to this fan because I'm like, he just has this energy about him that's just amazing. So now I'm blessed to get to actually... I took action. I said, I want to work with you. <laughs> and we started this process where now I actually am blessed to be one of Jesse's personal clients and him getting to, to coach me on my processes as well. But um, So you can obviously download all the past TV shows and radio shows. Go to mindbody90.com to get access to my video series to liberate yourself from the lies and get yourself set free with the truth. But obviously to find what Jesse's doing and all of his, his great things from the Upgraded Live to his gamma experience too, even if you are as cool as I am and you might have a possibility, I don't know, it's kind of rough to get to work with this man, then how, again, would you suggest they connect with you? Best place is just go to the website, go to jesseelder.com and you'll be able to get on the email list and from there you'll hear about all the things we have happening. Um, you mentioned the Upgraded Life. Mm -hmm. There is an online course that I taught with some of the basic principles and basic ideas and uh, we will be making that available to people who are on our list. It won't be available as a uh, product for the public. Mm -hmm. It's just for uh, friends and family, so to speak. So jump on the list and that will be a really good way for you to find out what's next. Also, Facebook is a good place too. Awesome. Any last things that you want to share closing out today? Anything that you want to end on? Just do you. Ah, I love it. You're phenomenal. I love you dearly. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It was for the best. You. Ah, Thank it was you. so much fun. So, obviously, I had a, you know, got to give you guys an awesome, cool experience in Jesse's hometown here in Austin, Texas. And thanks for joining us today. Remember that if you want a fucking fantastical life, you just get to go create it and take all these awesome things that Jesse just taught you today. This is Marcy Lock reminding you, power of choice is yours. Choose your best life and go. Lock it down. You gotta lock it down with me, but it's like an elephant hand. Bam, lock it down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have a good one.